To help keep your Metla Toledo SafeLine metal detector working correctly, we have produced a series of short videos explaining how to carry out a selection of tasks. These are available from the Product Inspection Extranet. There are many reasons why a metal detector may show a noise or an interference signal on the bar graph display. When fault diagnosis determines this interference is caused by an external source, then the RFI detector may prove very useful. Introducing the RFI detector, or more affectionately known as the SafeLine sniffer. The purpose of the sniffer is to react to airborne signals that are oscillating at the fundamental or a harmonic frequency of the metal detector. The unit has been designed to replicate the input circuit of the metal detector, which gives the user the opportunity to identify possible sources of interference. Let's take a closer look at the two controls. The control on the left is the frequency select button. The choices available are off, 25 kHz, 100 kHz, 200 kHz, 300 kHz, 400 kHz, 600 kHz, and 800 kilohertz. This control needs to be set to the same frequency as the metal detector that is subject to external interference. Please note that the frequencies available on the sniffer are receptive to standard crystal number 3 or 3400 on older detectors and 0 on version 4 units. If the application metal detector is using a stagger crystal, it may not react with the sniffer. To confirm if the detector is using the standard stagger crystal, check the detector key panel. If you're working with an earlier version of a detector, check for a number 3 at the end of the model number when pressing the recall button. On the version 4 range of detectors, the stagger used can be confirmed by pressing the information button in the running mode. The standard crystal uses 0. The fact that the detector may not show a signal on the sniffer because of the crystal may not be a disadvantage, but using the transmitting signal from the detector to help gauge signal levels may help. The right control of the sniffer is the sensitivity control. The control moves clockwise from min to max. Like the sensitivity control of the metal detector, it allows the user to control how much interference creates a signal on the bar graph display. There is a battery low warning light to indicate that the PP3 battery located around the back of the sniffer needs to be replaced. Don't forget to turn the sniffer off after use to avoid wasting battery life. A spare PP3 in your toolkit may be a good idea just in case it's required. To create a simulation of an interference problem, we have placed an unscreened cable close to the aperture that is passing control signals from a frequency drive or inverter to a motor. You can see the effect it has on the bar graph display of the metal detector. The reason this signal causes interference on the detector is because the frequency drive sends a square wave signal to the motor to control the speed. Unfortunately, square waves contain harmonic frequencies which may react with the original frequency of the detector or harmonics of the original frequency. To operate the sniffer, place it within a meter of the detector. Set the frequency switch of the sniffer to the same operating frequency of the detector. When the correct frequency is set, you may see a signal on the bar graph of the sniffer. If not, increase the sense control to show the sniffer reacting with the detector. Of course, we don't want to see the signal of the detector. We're trying to identify possible interference around the system. So the next step is to turn the detector off. When the detector is off, move the sniffer around the detector to see if a signal is present. You may need to increase the sensitivity of the sniffer to see a problem. In this case, you can clearly see that the unscreened cable is emitting a signal that is affecting the detector. In real applications, this may not be so easy. It may be necessary to walk around the detector system, checking all cables close by. Also, check any control cabinets which may contain interference sources. 
When the cause of interference is detected, then discuss with the customer possible options to remove the problem. Are all cables screened from the inverter to the motor? Can cables be routed away from the detector to reduce the effect? Are the inverters correctly filtered to reduce interference? In some cases, line reactors can help to reduce interference. Can these be fitted? Can the variable speed motor be replaced with a fixed speed version if the customer does not alter the speed? In the case of control cabinets, are these correctly earthed to enclose any possible interference? If you require any further assistance, please contact your local Metla Toledo office.